When I first got the call to speak for TEDx, I was excited and I was very honored. And right away, I started posting the news on Facebook and calling up my friends and, uh, and started looking up other TED Talks. And then immediately, I started thinking up, you know, catchy titles and how I would best present my message. And then I started visualizing, standing right here in front of you. But you're much better looking than I'd imagined. And then several weeks later, I got another call. Only this one immediately gripped my throat and set my heart racing. This was a very different kind of excitement, and yet one I'd experienced so many times before, the dreaded phone call. These words shot right through me. Kalita, we think Billy may have drowned. I was on the other side of the country, finishing up a singing and speaking tour when I got the call. Immediately, things began going through my mind. I thought, how could this be happening to me one more time? But the mantra that I had, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And the words of Scripture... My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When the initial shock of the news about my brother's drowning hit me, then I immediately flipped into high gear and the adrenaline started pumping. There it was, that all too familiar feeling. I thought, hadn't I just experienced this? Very same phone call. I can hardly believe it's almost nine years ago that I got a call in the middle of the night telling me that my sister and my niece were airlifted three hours away to Calgary after my sister's car had been hit by a huge truck. Well, frantically, I did everything in my power to hop on a, a plane when, when flights were scarce because Toronto was having a, a massive blackout. After 24 hours, finally, I arrived to find that my 12-year-old niece was fighting for her life and my beautiful 42-year-old sister had lost her battle. The news about my brother, Billy, was sinking in. And the strong one in me was rising up. Yes, that's me. I'm the strong one. I have always been the strong one. I've experienced several childhood traumas, emotional, mental, verbal, sexual abuse a controlling and manipulative first marriage, and then the devastation of my second marriage when my husband had an affair with one of my best friends over a period of time. And here I was, one more time, picking myself off the floor. I can still remember, as a little girl, those anxious nights with my ear pressed tightly against my parents' bedroom, listening to the pleas of my mother as she begged my father, as he made threats, to shoot himself. One day I came home from school and my mother quickly and quietly removed us from the family home. And six months after that, at the age of 11, 
on my mother's 45th birthday, she got the call. And there would be no more threats. In order to try to understand my father's suicide, I was given a beautiful gift of music. A gift to be able to express my sorrow and my grief. And that's when I wrote my very first song. Four years after my mother passed away, sorry, four years later, at the age of 15, my mother's terminal breast cancer left me an orphan and in the clutches of a wicked stepfather. I had a lot to carry and grew up very quickly with all the emotional baggage that I had, plus the household duties that were thrust upon me. And then two years later, still grieving the loss of my mother, another dreaded phone call. My oldest brother, Jimmy, had been found dead of an accidental heroin overdose. Only now was it safe for me to release the deep, dark secret that had been held captive between Jimmy and myself. I've been holding on to a secret The deep, dark kind that you keep inside All of my life I've been so mixed up Tried to run but I just can't hide Every day when I look in the mirror I can't believe all the faces I see I've been hurt and I feel cheated It's time I finally set me free No, this is not my imagination No, this is not just a very bad dream What you hear is a true confession Of a deep, dark secret it's been haunting me Sometimes it's too hard to remember Oh, the memory is killing me How could someone say they love you Then take away the child in me Every day when I look in the mirror I can't believe all the faces I see I've been stained and I feel dirty But soap and water never washed me clean No, this is not my imagination No, this is not just a very bad dream What you hear is a true confession of a deep, dark secret that's been haunting me. No, this is not your image. No, this is not just a very bad dream What you have is a true confession That the deep, dark secret That the deep, dark secret Set you free Set 
Well, at the age of 18, I traveled 22,000 kilometers, 20, sorry, 2,200 miles to start a new life studying to be an actress. I always had big stars in my eyes and wanted to be famous. And during my first few months of this new life, I met the man who I would marry which unfortunately would only cause me more heartache and more pain. And I embarked upon a solo performing and music career and really had wonderful dreams of what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, during that period of time, I used alcohol and drugs and sex to hide all of the agony and the fear and the deep-seated shame. And the walls that I erected were enormous, and the masks were countless. And in fact, I even created comedic characters to hide behind. And I brought a few of them with me here today. I want you to meet Sophia Flanagan. Oh my gosh, this place is absolutely gorgeous. But I've been here for the whole day and I still haven't figured out who this TEDx guy is. When I do, I'll let you know. And then there's the fun-loving Canadian gal, Jude Johansson. How's it going, eh? Awesome, you guys are excellent. This is so amazing. Can't believe I'm part of TEDx. And, I, and I'm really excited because we're only uh, a few hours from Vegas. I am so hoping to see some stars. <laughs> and the prestigious author and doctor, Priscilla Rottenbott. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to be with you all here. Thank you so much for allowing me to promote my brand new book, Priscilla Rottenbot, Keeping Abreast of Your Health. I was so good at pretending I could literally transform myself. I was a professional performer, on and off the stage. But who was I? Really. One night, after many years of hiding and running from myself and from my struggles and from all the heartache and the pain, I found myself driving my van on the highway, literally spinning out of control. As I headed for the ditch and the embankment, I was convinced that my life was over. And everything came to a crashing halt. In disbelief, I was shocked to see I was still alive. My life had been spared. And there would be no dreaded phone call. I was so grateful. As I slowly climbed out of the deep ditch, in the middle of nowhere, I realized that after all these years, I finally, could surrender. No more hiding, no more lying, and no more pretending. By the grace of God, I had finally found the courage to face my own truth and admit that I couldn't be the strong one anymore. Thank you.
Ever since I was a young girl, I've been strong for everybody else. Now that I'm a little older, I think it's time I let myself cry when I need to be shy if I want to don't have to keep a smile upon my face I don't want to be the strong one and I don't Thank you so much. If you're tired of being the strong one, I encourage you to have faith and trust in yourself that you can know true healing and peace. When we find the courage to fully surrender, we will truly experience our greatest 